Well, this is awkward. Ooh, sexual content, alcohol use, smoking, violence, foul language. This sounds like my kind of movie. God damn. Donnie, you're such a dick. <laughs> Whoa, Elizabeth. <laughs> For the love of God, can we not talk at the dinner table? There's a reason why the some families have that role. No talking at the dinner table. Then why don't you start taking the goddamn pills? You, apparently you're not taking me either, motherfucker. Holy shit. Sorry. I tried to flush twice in a row. This, uh, I'm watching this with commercials, so I'm going to have sidebars in here without having to pause it. So, you know, I'm sitting there anyway. I might as well talk, right? Guess he was sleep golfing. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Not bad, man. He made a great sleep golfing joke, and you had a, you tried to chime in with the fucking uh, droll joke. Holy shit! Does a plane hit the fucking house? It fell in his room. It would have fucking killed him if he had been in there. Holy shit! Yeah, we're getting paid off this, boys. Get me paid, motherfucker. It had been four times as much if we had lost one of our kids, but we'll take what we can get, you know? They don't know where it came from. Really? Really? There's no plane missing an engine? Holy shit. I'm watching this on Amazon, and if you scroll over, it'll show you who's in the scene. That's Jake Gillenthal, which means that's his sister playing his sister, which is interesting. But that's why I would never have recognized him. He's so fucking young here. Really, we're just going to be using, openly using Class A felony drugs, huh? Right here in the fucking hallway. It's interesting to have funny how time flies. Even the Considering this seems like a time travel movie, or some sort. They just want to see what happens when they tear the world apart. That sounds like some joking shit. Sit next to the boy you think is the cutest. <laughs> Quiet! What, are there 17 chairs open? How about if I want to sit next to the girl I think is cutest? No. Come on, man. We ain't got no fucking day. Joni, get up. Damn, Joni's been catching L's this entire fucking class. Holy shit. A teacher could kiss my ass if I was Joni. Dad. What? Dad! Jesus, man. Eyes on the road, motherfucker. There's a lot of creepy characters in this movie. I'm into it. I mean, uh, Drew Barrymore's character is creepy as fuck. For instance. Follow him. Where? Into the future. And then what happens? I don't die from a fucking plane exit? Do you think the world is coming to an end? My man, wait. She asked that question and they go to fucking commercial. You gotta be shitting me. Watch the shit with commercial sucks ass, but it's still better than paying for the movie. You yeah, know, I'm... Money's tight, man. I'm not trying to pay $5 to rent this shit. Well, you know what's interesting thing? Remember how in 2012, you know, the Mayans supposedly predicted the end of the world? Not what it was, but, you know, let's just go with it for a second, okay? Let's say that they had predicted the end of the world. Everybody was, was talking about it and shit. And it was going to be, uh, I think it was December 20th, 2012, right? Here's the funny thing about that. For months we heard that, you know, the world's going to end December 20th. The world's going to end December 20th. In October, the world's going to end December 20th. You know, in November, the world's going to end in, in five weeks. In December, the world's going to end in two weeks. And then we get to the week of, uh, the world's going to end tomorrow. You know, all this shit. Twitter was hilarious that day, by the way. Uh, somebody tweeted, hey, Australia, y'all still there? <laughs> and then somebody had a fake mine account. It just said the mines. And after the world didn't end, they had one tweet and one tweet only. They said, well, this is awkward. <laughs> Which, by the way, is what I always reference was. That's why I say it, because it made me laugh so hard. That's why I'm continuously referencing, right? Some people died on that. Hundreds of people died that day because hundreds of people die every day, right? The hundreds of people who died that day, their world did end that day. Mark, which I think is what this may be happening here. That's stupid. If you die... Entire See, I would have put the commercial in between scenes. He just answered the question and then he said two lines and then they go to the next scene. Whoever cut this up for the commercials is idiotic, right? When you die, the world ends for you. 
So I think that may be what they're doing here. I'm not probably not, but you know, it's on my mind. The people who died in December twentieth, two thousand twelve, the world ended that day. Come together to join hands. People who believe in human life. The hell is this a cult? It's absolutely he has emotional problems. Oh, I have those too. What kind of emotional problems does your dad have? He stabbed my mom four times in the chest. Yeah, you probably should have tried to joke about that, dude. I thought Gretchen Ross was pretty cool. God damn, man. Yeah, I was in jail once. You're oversharing. I, I, I mean, I, I literally just met you. House. I mean, it was abandoned. I'd like to try something new this time. Okay. It's called the Spanish Slipknot. And, uh, oh, you're talking about therapy. Oh, sorry. Think about girls a lot. Yeah. He's a teenage boy. What kind of fucking question is that? I asked you about your family, Donnie. No. <laughs> I don't think about fucking my family. That's Although my sister's kind of hot. Oh, they make everybody write it down. Interesting. Donald Darko. Would paint have the same handwriting? I mean, handwriting would doesn't correspond to paintings. It's letters, does it? I don't think that would work. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on him anyway. Smurfette fucks all the other Smurfs. Why do you think Papa Smurf made her? It's because all the other Smurfs were getting too horny. I mean, you ever think... People always make that joke, right? You ever think the, the Smurfs were just fucking each other? Yeah. I have in my hand Graham Greene's... Oh, my God. Soldiers. This short story is... Holy part shit. Of my daughter's English There's so assignment. much fucking in this. In you even know who Graham Greene is. I think we have all seen the name. <laughs> That's Lauren Green, you fucking dumbass. <laughs> is in the negative energy spectrum. Fear is not the opposite of and love, love, you dribbling moron. Love is in the positive energy spectrum. Juanita has an important math test today. She has learned about the test for several weeks, but is not studied. Juanita was a fucking idiot. <laughs> Ling Ling finds a world on the ground filled with money. She Ling Ling is now rich. And then just deny everything else. If you don't complete the assignment, you'll get a zero for the day. Oh, darn. A zero? Eat my ass. Donald. <laughs> that was a brilliant editing cut. That was fucking brilliant, man. We can put in our own mind what he said. Like I said, in my case, he said, eat my ass. <laughs> what exactly did you say? Oh, yes, please. Apartment? I want to hear this. I'll tell you what he said. <laughs> he asked me to forcibly <laughs> to my <laughs> Well, not as not as strong as I would have went, but okay. <laughs> they all fucking ate her guts, man. <laughs> we've we've both felt that it was time for us to come in and, and discuss. We think you're incompetent. You've been taking a bunch of our money for nothing. Yes. Frank? And they don't yes. know shit. The giant penny rack. Yeah, <laughs> well, that makes it sound a little. It's a little bit scarier than just a bunny rabbit, man. I think he's like undersold the the imagery here. So, if you think that more medication will do that, yeah, pumping I fuller of drugs. That's what we did back in the eighties. What do I do to learn how to fight? Start by kicking my ass. <laughs> Violence is a product of fear. The only smart thing he said this entire fucking movie. How much did they pay me to be here? Yeah, <laughs> finally a pertinent question. Uh, excuse me. Down the down the bills, Joe. So we can buy your book because I gotta tell you, Yar, that was some of the worst advice I ever. <laughs> That's right. Troll this bitch. Tell her to get off the couch, stop eating Twinkies, and maybe go out for field hockey. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. God damn it. He he can't handle the hecklers. The state of comedians, they got like six jokes lined up for hecklers at any moment, right? They can fire back and make you look like a fucking asshole, right? He can't deal with hecklers. This boy is scared to death. Okay, finally son. you punch him back. It breaks my heart to say this. But you're unreachable. But I believe you're a very troubled and confused. Why would it break your heart to say that? It's I the truth, right? According to you. Yeah. Everything he says is just a fucking lie. Everything he says. Well, not everything. He had a couple good points. Very few. The she said about violence is probably true, you know. But first are afraid, so they want to hit somebody, you know. And there's there are chapters in that book that describe the stuff I've been seeing. Oh, it shit. It just be a coincidence. 
Here's the thing. Uh, people talk, every time we talk about, oh, if you can see the future, predict the future, that means we don't have any free will. No, it just means they're looking ahead in the book, right? Okay, give you an example. I make a choice right now to punch a button on my phone or to not punch a button on my phone. Now, I haven't made a choice yet whether I'm going to do that, but by the time you watch this video, the choice has been made. I either punched a button on this phone or I didn't punch a button on this phone. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I haven't made that choice. By the time, you, like I said, by the time you watch this, the choice has been made. I've repeated myself because I want to truly emphasize that fact. From your point of view, especially if you're watching this video a second time, you will know my choice before I make it. From your point of view. Because you're in the future. But that doesn't take away my free will. I freely, of my own will, made a choice of whether or not to press a button on my phone. And you, the fact that you know what my choice is, doesn't mean I didn't have a choice. It just means you're at a different point in time where you know the end result. But the choice was a freely, will-powered, made choice. I know I phrased that very awkwardly, but you know what I'm saying. I made this choice of my own free will. Okay, so now we're getting ready to find out what I'm going to do. Am I going to press a button on this phone or not? Okay, I pressed the button on the phone. So, now, like I said, you knew I was going to do that before I did it. If you watch this a second time. You knew it. Because you're in the future. That doesn't take away my free will. That's all that telling the future is. Telling the future is, you're able to go to a point beyond when pers a person made a free choice of their own free will. And find out what that choice is. That doesn't mean they didn't have a fucking choice. But I've seen so many authors and so many content creators argue the fact that if somebody knows what you're going to do, then you have no free choice. You're just riding on rails. No, motherfucker. They're just at a different point. It's all about point of view, man. Oh, here we go with the wallet. <laughs> well, I guess I just got wealthy. Didn't your dad, like, stab your mom? Oh, okay. Well, I'll be seeing you in the hallway later, motherfucker. <laughs> God damn, man. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I really thought he was going to pitch out there for a second. Two for me for dead, please. God damn, two booby tickets is just two dollars? Fuck. I want, now I want time travel. Oh, shit. Uh, put it back on. <laughs> Oh, shit. I don't remember that in the extended cut. They are Sparkle Motion. Oh, this is a battle rap band. I've heard of them. School talent shows are god fucking awful. But these girls are dropping some science. You know... She may be a raging wackadoo, but she can choreograph some shit. I'm starting to think Frank, Frank is not a very nice person. You know, I said uh, Frank's not a nice person, but it seems like everything is out. I don't understand the school thing yet. But making him leave the room, making him leave the room before the thing came down, saved his life. And this exposed this motherfucker, right? But I don't understand what flooding, unless it got him in with his girlfriend. I guess they actually stated that in the text, didn't they? If the school hadn't flooded, we wouldn't have had this conversation. We wouldn't be dating. So I guess that was the purpose of that. So everything Frank's done has improved life in some way. Either his life or everybody's, right? Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> hey, like I said, she's a wackadoo, but she can choreograph some shit. That was awesome. Please, don't be so <laughs> It's obviously some kind of conspiracy to destroy an innocent C -O -N man. C-O-N. And I have taken conspiracy. it myself to chaperone them on their trip. But right now, you can't go. <laughs> you can't believe me. Drink this All in. The other mothers. I Drink this in. Asking you, but none of the other mothers are available to I would go. never dream of asking that. It's hilarious. Yeah, eat a dick. Sometimes I doubt you're <laughs> 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 What a bitch. Like I said, eat my ass. God damn. Have another drink. 
<laughs> I wonder if that was a flub that they kept in because it was awesome. You'd be surprised how often that happens. How did you feel being denied these hungry, hungry victims? Ask me how I feel one more goddamn right. time. And then I won't be able to figure out what this is all about. Well, it's interesting about this. He says he has to obey, but then he acts like he's sleepwalking when he actually does it. So it can't be both, right? Either your body's being taken over by somebody else, or you're doing it of your own volition. If you're doing it of your own volition, then you wouldn't be like, looking like you're sleepwalking, right? So, that's interesting. Time travel possible, Donnie. Time's up. Of course, it looks like this. he's actually talking to the... She's actually talking to the other personality, so... Maybe both can be true, right? This is the person who actually did the shit. Hey, we should totally throw a party. I mean, mom and dad are gone, and like, it's Halloween carnival. We could totally get away with it. Okay. It has to be small, right? Yeah, let's trash the house. It don't matter. World's ending tomorrow. Uh, you okay? You, you had this whole party, and you didn't invite me. You're a dick. Yeah, my mom's gone. Like, why the hell would you not invite his girlfriend? Yeah. Maybe he did and she couldn't come. You know? Oh, well. Good news. The girls, they got three and a half stars, and they get to come back for the quarter. Ed McMahon was kind of creepy, but it worked out. It leads you in. Dispatch your I didn't miss the dialogue when I talking about Frank going for a beer run. I just wonder if that's a red errand. It feels like a red errand to me. Yeah. Maybe not a red area. Maybe it's what sets him off. His time is running out. We gotta go. So the douche, two douchebags live? You gotta be shitting me. I keep going back to the plane engine. You know, maybe the rest of the plane falls on the house that day, right? People just cannot avoid going over to... When there's a piano in the room... They cannot avoid touching the keys. I don't know what it is. Real life and in movies. I've seen it in real life too, man. They can't avoid it. Man. Just cannot help themselves. God damn. The fuck is this? You, you gotta do something? You're douchebags, man. The fuck? Really, those two more friends just gonna stand here. Don't fucking move. Don't fucking move. I mean, I know the dude's got a knife and he's like twice their size, but still, man. Let's go! Fuck off, bitch. <laughs> I have a bigger knife. <laughs> what a moron. God damn. That crazy driving scared him off. Cool. You gotta be shitting me. I mean, wouldn't you rather run over a hundred year old woman than, than a young girl? Jesus. So Frank did it, huh? Look at him, he's wearing a bunny costume too, man. What the fuck did you do, man? God damn. You killed her, Frank! So what, he attacks him with the knife? Takes his eye? Oh, shit. God damn, man. Well, I guess that explains the fucking fucked up eye. Holy shit. Shoot her too, man. It's really her fault. Man, I was way off on this movie. This is not how I thought it was going to play out. Here's the thing, too. Like, I know this is extreme circumstances, right? She probably had crushed uh, chest or whatever. But um, we're not professional doctors. We can't really diagnose if somebody's actually dead or not. So we should always get them to the fucking medical people, you know? You would think? So just drive around with their fucking maybe not completely dead body? Oh shit. There's so many things I need to ask you. Went to school and I was very nervous. No one knew me. Like I said, now they're no really getting paid. I'm gonna send her this on they went to a fucking commercial there. Probably it's just gonna be end credits after this. They wanna fuck you for an extra two minutes of commercials, right? That's how they play it, right? But um I was silent for the last, like, three, four minutes, man. Mostly. I had one joke. But I don't really know what to make of this. That's not a good or a bad thing, by the way. 
It's just some movies, you need to think about them before you, like, talk about them. I have a feeling that's what I'm going to do here. I'll um, record my thoughts about it, like, several hours after I finish this reaction. You know, probably is what I'm going to do. I guess we got a little bit more. It wasn't just the credits. I take it back. No, they just wanted to fuck us with the, for the credits. Okay. So I've had some time to think, and I think I understand the problem. You know, I didn't read the article I showed at the very beginning. Spoilers. And I'm not going to read it now, because I don't think the person who wrote the article, judging by the headline, understood the movie. So there's no point in reading it. But I understand where they're coming from. You know, because I think when I was younger, I would have been pissed off and I would have hated this movie. But I'm not younger. I'm older, more cultivated, more cultured, more experienced. So I don't hate it. I think it's an awesome movie, actually. But to talk about my feelings uh, about this movie, what I think it's about, let's uh, do a little mental exercise first. This is a painting called The Stonecutters. Tell me, what do you think this painting is about? Look at it. You know, clearly it's about two people cutting stone, right? I don't think it's ambiguous. I think if we got a hundred people to look at this painting, they would all come away with the same thing. Two people cutting stone. They're stone cutters. It's, you know, it's a slice of life from a time gone by. So that's what it is. There's no ambiguity there. That is most Hollywood movies. Most Hollywood movies, you, you watch it and you come away with the exact same experience as everybody else. You may not like the movie. You may think the movie sucked, but you come away with the same experience. If 100 people watch Independence Day, all 100 of them are going to come away with the exact same experience. These are aliens. The way the aliens were defeated was fucking stupid. You can't put a virus, you can't make a virus compatible with alien technology, even though they tried to hand wave it by saying they had access to alien technology. You can't fucking... Never mind. I'm not going to get into it. That aside, you come away with the exact same experience. Aliens have aided, they kicked their ass, we beat them in the end. The end. Nobody else is going to come away from that one, you know, with something else. Oh, this is actually about the seven layers of hell or something. Dante's Inferno, you know? Whatever the fuck that was. So, we're all going to come away from the same experience. Now, we, we all may not like the movie. Some of us liked it, some of us hated it, some of us enjoyed it, some of us didn't. Some are ambivalent. But we all came away with the same experience, right? Okay, so. Most Hollywood movies are like stonecutters. The rest of the Hollywoods, a small percentage of Hollywood movies and a large percentage, by the way, of indie movies are like a Jackson Pollock painting. This is Jackson Pollock's Blue Poles. What is this painting about? I'd actually be curious. Leave a comment below if you think you know what this painting's about. A thousand people could look at this painting and a thousand people will come up with a thousand different explanations for what they think this painting's about. Because it's about nothing and it's about everything. Really what it's about is the experience you... What you think it's about is what it's about. That was Jackson Pollock's intention. Matter of fact, if you Google it, you'll be damn depressed to find a fucking official explanation for what somebody thinks it is because they know that's a fool's game. There's entire books been written. In the 70 years since this painting was painted, millions of people have had opinions on this shit. Books written, articles written, college theses written about it. A lot of people have come away with this with a lot of different experiences, a lot of different opinions. Because there is no universal explanation, there is no universal opinion for this this painting. Because it's supposed to be interpreted by the person. That is Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko is a Jackson Pollock painting. There are probably a hundred people who could watch this movie and they will come away with a hundred different opinions. Because it's a Jackson Pollock painting. It's not stone cutters. It's blue poles. So, in a minute, I'm going to tell you what I got out of it. I'd be curious what you guys got out of it. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. Each person's going to get something different out of it. Just because you got something different than me doesn't mean I'm an idiot or you're an idiot. Like, it's a Jackson Pollock painting. The entire purpose of this is to get different things out of it. That's just what it is. What I personally got out of this was that any person's, if any person is killed before they've reached the full potential of their lifetime, that will have a positive and a negative impact on the world. Now, whether it be a net positive or a net negative impact is open to interpretation. And there's no way to know that. In this case, we actually do know. I think his life had a net positive effect. 
Because we got to see 28 days of his life beyond when he died. So we got to see some of his potential. See the positive and negative effects he had on the world and on people. And I don't think any one of us, even the most vile person, has a completely 100% negative impact on the world. They're, maybe they, they treat their mother right. Or they help a stranger across the street. Or something. Who knows? But I also don't think anybody has a completely 100% positive effect on the world. Every now and then you're in a bad mood, you're an asshole to somebody. That's a negative impact. You know? I don't really interact with people anymore, so I don't have an effect either way. But, like, maybe somebody sees my video and I trigger them in some way or I say a word they don't like and that ruins an hour of their day. So that's a negative impact, right? So, or I make them laugh and that's a positive impact. But Donnie Darko had both a negative and positive impact on the world. He exposed that horrible-ass cult leader, got him arrested. Now that Donnie died too soon, who knows how long that guy will go along doing the shit he was doing. Who knows how much longer Frank would be drunk driving and shit, you know, and endangering other people. I also think he had a very positive impact on Gretchen. Because, remember, the night that she died, she was at his house... Because somebody had broken into her house, trashed her place, and her mother was missing. Presumably it's her stepfather, right? She came to him because the police said, go to somebody you feel safe with. What if, you know, if she hadn't met him, there would be no place she felt safe with. Maybe she would have gotten closer to those two douchebag friends of his, and they seemed kind of rapey, so that could have been bad. More likely, she would have lied to the police, yes, I have someplace safe I can go, and she would have went back home, and maybe her stepfather would have swung back by, and kidnapped her, killed her, you know, caught her there. So without Donnie Darko in the world, she probably comes a bad end either anyway, right? Who knows? So him being in the world probably would have saved her life, you know, if they hadn't done the stupid shit that got her killed anyway, right? She died either way that night, right? But I'm just saying, like, him being gone doesn't help her because I think she goes either way. She's gone. Frank will live. But like I said, you get the vile cult leader still alive. Um, Donnie's sister doesn't get on national TV, and maybe she got her dreams come true, you know? If she's going to be a dancer, maybe being on the Epic Man show and getting through to the next round, maybe she would have won the whole fucking dance, you know, the, uh, what was his show called? Uh, Something of the Stars. I don't remember. But there are people who won that show who have become, like, major uh, recording artists. There's somebody from Canada who did that. You know, they, they actually, you know, if a lot of dancers are also singers. And so they get famous for one reason, and then uh, record labels like, okay, yeah, you have some popularity. You have a Q, Q rating. Later on, maybe you'd have social media followers. But even before that, they'd be, they would take a risk on somebody who's had some national TV exposure. So all that was because Donnie was still around. With Donnie dead, the sister's too distraught to dance. The um, mother is, is, doesn't take them to New York even if they do get picked, which they probably wouldn't because the sister probably wouldn't have even danced. And so the whole the whole group is thrown off. But if they had, you know, the crazy old bitch would have taken them because she's not like st- you know beating the bushes trying to you know defend her cult leader. So, and who knows? Maybe the mom being there is what pushed him over the edge and impressed Eggman Man so much. You know, so you change one thing, and the other thing could happen. Most likely, she wouldn't be dancing though, regardless, because her brother just died. The whole family's traumatized. They can't live there. They probably just move away. Or they they take a long vacation just to get out of there. Because, you know, who would want to live in a house where your brother died, right? And your son died. So, her dreams are dashed. So, you can see, like, the positive effects he had on life. And, of course, there's the negative effects, right? You know, he did get Gretchen killed. I'm theorizing she would still die. We don't know that for sure. We know she does die if he stays around. So, that's a negative impact. And then, of course, the negative impact to Frank. Also... I believe he got uh, Drew Barrymore fired because without vandalizing a school, her story doesn't get the uh, the notoriety of inspiring a, uh, vandalism. And she doesn't get called out publicly in front of the parents, all the fucking parents, by a crazy-ass teacher. And that probably put pressure on the school board to fire this bitch, right? None of that happens if he dies when he, when he dies, right? So that was another negative impact that was removed. So, bottom line, I'm going to keep this short because these files can't be too long. Bottom line is, the message I get from this movie is people can have positive and negative effects effects in the world. It's never all one or the other. 
it's a mixture. I believe, and this this is debatable, if we were to weigh everything. I mean, people are dead. He killed Frank. So, that's fucked up. Him dragging Gretchen over to uh, this fucking old lady's uh, house, where he gets assaulted by the, the home invaders, gets Gretchen killed. That's a pretty, two pretty big negative impacts in the world. I still feel like he had a net positive overall, if we look at everything, but that's debatable. It's possible it was net negative. Either way, it's an interesting thing to think about. And it's an interesting illustration for people that may be feeling suicidal or whatever, or just, you know, just because you think everything's bad, you, you know, you know there's ne- it's never 100% bad. People are like, oh, the world would be better off if I'm not around. Well, maybe some things, some specific things would be better off. But the world, the entire world, everybody in your orbit, I doubt it. Like I said, I don't think all of us have a completely 100% negative impact. So, or any of us. So that that's what I get out of it. But like, I think there's a thousand different things you can get out of this because it's a Jackson Pollock painting. That's pretty much where I'm at with this. But uh, I do think this is a movie best enjoyed when you were older in life. Because I think, I really believe I would have hated this movie if I'd seen it when, I, you know, when it first came out. I would have fucking hated this movie. So, because I just wasn't old enough to appreciate that some movies are Jackson Pollock paintings. You know, I used to think it was cowardice on the filmmaker's part. They, you know, they didn't want to take a stand and commit to something. You know, <coughs> inception. <coughs> but, you know, I've grown. 